My name is Catherine from Lifehouse Tokyo. Thank you for joining us for Church Online. Wherever you are watching from, it's so great that you have connected with us. We are currently in a series all about the Lord's Prayer and it's been fantastic. But don't worry if you've missed any of them, you can catch up by checking it out on our YouTube channel. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and receive all the latest content. It's just there ready and available for you. Our hope is that by the end of this series, everyone who is watching uh, online or a part of Lifehouse will know the Lord's Prayer well, you'll know it by heart, and that this simple prayer will have a big and powerful impact in your life and that you would grow in confidence and have a growing expectation that as you pray to God, you will see amazing breakthrough as you pray anytime and anywhere. So we've broken it down into the five P's, the Lord's Prayer. It's easy to remember what the five P's, and that is praise, plan, provision, pardon life, and protection. Kind of easy, hey, to remember it like that. So let's take a look at Matthew 6 and see how Jesus teaches us to pray. It says, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. This is about praise. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is speaking about plan, God's plan and how we can be a part of it. Give us today our daily bread. That's talking about our provision, provision, asking God for our needs. And forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. That's a part in life. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And that is speaking about protection. It's such an incredible prayer. When I was at school, we used to have something called assembly, where we would sing the Lord's Prayer. The music teacher would come and sit down on like a piano, and it would be this like really formal event. The whole school would stand up. And even though it wasn't a Christian school that I was a part of, in South Africa, it seemed to be part of tradition and culture to do this at school. And we would sing, sing the Lord's Prayer, and it would be like in very old-fashioned English words, you know, the these and the thous, and it was quite like a very high opera sounding song, like, Our Father which art in heaven. And I remember like there would be parts that would be super high and the boys would really struggle to hit those notes. And while I might find a little funny thinking back to it now, I'm so grateful that I actually heard that song and heard that prayer because from a young age, I've I've known it by heart. So I can always just quickly refer back to it, think back to it. Uh, the Lord's Prayer is something that I, that I know and, I, and I, I can just recall whenever I want. And that's the amazing thing about music, right? Actually, music has a great way to get things stuck into our heads and our hearts. And that's why we have been looking at Kenny Koala's video um, every week. So Kenny Koala is the Lifehouse Church Kids uh, Koala mascot and he's been teaching the kids the Lord's Prayer and we're taking a look at it every week not because we think you are kids or trying to like belittle you or anything but I think it's actually a really catchy song um, not like that opera one I used to sing but really simple and catchy and I think it'll be a great way to get the song stuck into your head and your heart so take it away Kenny. A catchy song. I've got it stuck in my head too. So take a listen to that, right? It's really helpful. I think the Lord's Prayer is incredible. It's short, simple, and yet it is so powerful. Jesus encourages us. He encourages those when He's teaching them that we don't need fancy long prayers for God to listen to us, for them to be effective, but we can pray these short, powerful prayers and God is listening to us. 
I love this prayer. It's, it's incredible. It's for the rich. It's for the poor. It's for the educated, the uneducated. It spans generations. It's multi-generational. I think young people and old people can relate to this prayer. It's multicultural. It's relevant in every culture, every language, every nation. Everyone around the world can, can relate to this, can say it. Can, it's easily translated into different languages. What an incredible masterpiece this prayer is. And I want to encourage you, if you're new to Christianity, this is such a great way for you to learn how to pray. As, as somebody who's served on the Alpha Dream Team, where a lot of new Christians come and discover about Christianity, uh, a, a lot of the time, one of the questions I get is, how can I pray? I feel too scared to pray because I don't know which words to use. I don't know if I can say the right thing. And do I need like prayer beads? How should I pose? And it's so easy. And I love to to, to explain how we pray it and to see how they see, oh, this is amazing. Is that it? The Lord's Prayer, this is simple. I can do this. So it's really great if you're a brand new Christian or new to Christianity, this is such a great way for you to learn how to pray. And for those of you who have been following Jesus for many years and you know this prayer, I want to encourage you not to lose the wonder of this prayer. Actually, Jesus, he was teaching this in the context uh, to Jewish people who were used to prayer. Culture, their culture was really a, a culture of prayer. The, the law would be that you would have to pray three times a day. So, you know, prayer wasn't something unknown or unusual to them. And yet Jesus felt like it's really important to teach them how to pray. And all the disciples and the people must have looked at Jesus' life. They look at the relationship he has with his heavenly father. They look at the answers that he has to it. To, uh, when he was praying, there were amazing miracles and answered prayers. So they must have been wondering, like, what is it about Jesus' prayer life? We want to pray like this. And Jesus teaches them this prayer. And if it's good enough for, that, for them and that time, good enough for Jesus, it's going gonna, it's gonna to do wonders for us. It's good enough for us. So let's not lose the wonder of this amazing prayer. And so we've looked at praise, we've looked at God's plan, and today we're going to take a look at verse 11 of the prayer. It says in Matthew 6, 11, give us today our daily bread. The next P is provider. God is our provider. This prayer is asking God to provide for us. And so daily bread is talking about our needs. It's kind of a metaphor of the time for a uh, our needs. So in the Middle Eastern countries, they would know this, uh, you know, talking about bread because bread was very much a part of their culture. Uh, every day there would be a meal where you would have some bread. It was an important part of, of life and every day. So uh, people understood this whole uh, need for bread. They needed their daily bread. It's kind of the same as what rice is in Asia or maize meal in Africa. So it's talking about our needs, not just our physical like eating needs, but every kind of physical need and our emotional and our spiritual needs. It's, it's everything. And did you know that you can ask God to provide for your needs? You can ask Him. I've heard people say things like, oh, you know, I don't want to ask God for this. This is kind of small. I don't want to bother Him with this. Or this thing is too big. I can't talk to God about this. But I want to encourage you today that you can ask God to help you with your needs. You can ask Him to provide for your needs. God is our provider. I want to share a story with you that I heard from an American pastor called R.C. Sproul. He had some friends who were doing some relief work into Korea after the Korean War. They were working with orphans. After the Korean War ended, South Korea was left with a large number of children who who were orphaned by the war, and there were many relief programs set up to help those children in need. And uh, they really tried their best to provide a good environment for the kids, make sure that they had, you know, three basic meals a day, uh, you know, looking out for them. And yet the relief workers noticed that the kids were really anxious and unsettled, and many of them had trouble sleeping. So they were really worried about and concerned about these children and trying to figure out what can they do to help them. And uh, one of the relief workers was speaking to the orphans and, and discovered that the children were really anxious because they didn't feel really sure that they were going to get a meal the next day. They were really worried about, will there be food tomorrow? Is it going to be okay? And he, he thought of an idea, how can he help them? And so they made a plan. 
And they took a piece of bread and they put one in each child's hand just before they went to bed. And this wasn't so much for them to eat, but more like a security blanket, letting them know, you know what, you can sleep, it's going to be okay. Because when you wake up, there is definitely bread for you, there's food for you, you don't need to worry. And such a heartbreaking story, I can... I can only imagine how these precious children must have felt, like really vulnerable, insecure and confused. And while maybe you don't have such a background story like that, I think we can all relate to those kinds of feelings, right? Feeling like uh, you don't know what's going to happen in your future. You don't know if your, your needs are going to be met. And that can make you feel isolated, insecure. You can lose your confidence. We can relate to those feelings, right? But I want to encourage you that even in uncertain and difficult times, there is one truth that will always remain, and that is that God is our provider. Hebrews 4 encourages us with this. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, you can have confidence to approach God and to talk to Him. And today I want to share some things that I'm hoping is going to put a confidence in your heart so that when you're praying, give us this day our daily bread. You have a confidence in your heart as you pray this, knowing that God is listening and God is going to answer because God is your provider. The first thing I want to encourage you with is that God is our Father and we are His children. When when Jesus teaches the Lord's Prayer, He starts off with this, Our Father in Heaven. What an amazing way to start a prayer. From the very start, Jesus shows us how we can relate to God. And that is as a father, as a child, we can relate to him as a father. We are his children and he is our father. That's the position that we pray from. How beautiful is this? This is a prayer of a child to a father. So we're not begging God like servants or, or orphans. We, are, we can come to him as children, our Father in heaven. And I love that, you know, nothing is too big or too small to ask God. You can ask God for anything. That's what a child does. They have that kind of confidence. They can ask their Father about all of their needs. And we don't have to feel like those orphans. Think about those orphans in Korea. They didn't know where the next meal was coming from. They felt insecure. They, you know, we are not orphans. The Bible teaches us that whoever believes and receives Jesus becomes children of God. We are children of God and He is our Heavenly Father. And the next thing that can put confidence in your heart as you pray, give us this day our daily bread, is that everything belongs to God. I love how the Passion Translation puts it in this prayer. It says, we acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. You know, God can be our provider because everything belongs to Him. Psalm 24, 1 says this, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to Him. Everything was made by God and for Him. Everything we have, He has given us. Everything we have, even our gifts and our talents and our ability to make money is from God. He is our source. And we can have this confidence when we pray that God's resources are limitless. If He owns everything and He is our source for everything, He is an incredible provider and His his sources never run out. What amazing confidence we can have as we pray. Give us this day our daily bread. And just sharing from our own personal life, there are so many stories that I have of God being my source and being my provider. Too many to tell, but just one that I can think of is when I, I lived in South Africa, born and raised in South Africa. And um, I remember I was working for a church at the time, I was working for a church, and my husband was working for a, a orphanage at the time he was the director of the orphanage and that particular month that we were there there was no funding coming through there was uh, no money and they were unable to pay our salaries they said to us we're really sorry this month there is no money we can't pay your salaries as soon as money comes in uh, you know we'll try and make a payment and I remember going home and thinking oh my goodness what will we do it's not just my salary it's My husband's too. What are we going to do? We have bills to pay. How will we eat? What will we do? I was really stressed. And 
I came to God and I, I opened up the Word of God because I wanted to journal and hear God speak to me and give me courage about and wisdom and guidance and what to do. And I felt God speak this to me. He said, you know what? I'm your source. Everything belongs to me. You don't have to look to your boss to be your provider or your salary to be your provider. Your job is not your provider. I am your provider. Don't look to the wrong things. Look to the source. Look to the one who, who has everything, who, who owns everything. He can make it happen. He can provide for you. And I thought, that's it, God. I'm looking to you. You are my provider. And you know what? We have uh, such amazing testimonies of God's provision. Even that month, it was like, you know, our rent was taken care of. We got delivered um, some groceries on our doorsteps. That was absolutely extravagant. I remember one night in that month sitting down to a roast lamb meal. I cooked a roast lamb and I was thinking, what, God, this is the month where both of us haven't been able to have a salary and yet I'm feasting here. You've provided like this roast meal for me. God provided everything that we need. And I can say that every day I've looked back and see, wow, God, you really are my provider. You provide for everything I need. God is our source and everything belongs to him. So God is our provider every day and all our days. Give us this day our daily bread in the Greek is actually written in the present continuous imperative sense, which in simple terms just means this, that you can read it like this. Give and keep on giving us each day our daily bread or give us the bread we need every day. I used to think that this was a prayer just asking what we need today. Like, God, just give me what I need today. I just need to survive today. I just need to get through today. But I realized that that's, that's not God the Father's heart. And that's, that's not what this prayer is about at all. When we pray this, we are saying and acknowledging, God, every day you provide for me. And you're going to continue to provide for me. It's not just a once-off provision. But this is a journey where God is going to continually provide for us. How encouraging is that? Doesn't that fill your heart with confidence as you pray this prayer? Jesus also teaches us further on, after just a, a few paragraphs after he teaches us on prayer, he shares these encouraging words. Uh, he says in Matthew 6, 25 to 32, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you'll have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, He will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. How encouraging is that? What an amazing scripture. Jesus speaks into anxiety in the scripture. He says, don't worry about these things. And then he, like, it's a very real thing to feel anxious about these things. Right? We can all relate to that. We can, you know, we do need food. We do need clothing. You know, these are things we need. We need work. We need to be able to earn money. And, but it's easy to look at all the things we need and to start get anxious and worried. But you know what the anecdote or the cure for anxiety is? It's prayer. We can turn all those thoughts and those worries into prayer. I love this scripture in Philippians 4. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank Him for all He has done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your mind as you live in Christ. So turn your thoughts into prayer. Tell God what you need. Yes, we know that He knows what you need, but you know, He wants to hear from you. Tell, tell Him what you need. Thank Him and His peace will guard you. And that's why I think prayer is so incredible. And the Lord's Prayer, this, this give us this day, our daily bread is, is kind of a double-edged like sword, an amazing tool or instrument in our hand. We say like, you know, we, we're asking God, this is our needs. We, we we're telling Him this is our needs. But at the same time, we know that as we're praying, it's displacing worry and fear and anxiousness in our lives. What an incredible tool that we have 
using prayer to dispel worry and anxiousness and God answering our needs. And I like to use this line in the prayer as a trigger to spark, um, you know, ideas about things that I want to pray for as I'm asking God, my provider. When I say, give us this day our daily bread, I start to think about what I need physically, my physical needs, my family, my work, financial needs, you know, my community needs. This is such a great trigger to pray about all of these things. Jesus also talks in the scripture about your value. It's so beautiful. There's actually a a really modern song that's been written that kind of paraphrased around uh, the scripture. And it says, you know, if he dresses the lilies with beauty and splendor, how much more will he clothe you? And if he watches over every sparrow, how much more does he love you? Do you know how valuable you are to God? Not only is he the most richest connected father, he is also a loving and generous father. I actually found this amazing footage online where uh, there was these wild flowers growing in Israel, beautiful fields of these beautiful red wild flowers. And I was imagining as Jesus was speaking about these wild flowers, you know, that people would have thought back in their minds to, you know, these fields, they must have walked past these fields of wild flowers, beautiful for miles and miles, beautiful, wild, beautiful lilies and flowers and and thought, this is amazing. Look at this, this is beautiful. And nobody's tending them or caring caring for them. They're just, they're there, God's sustaining them and giving them life. So they must have thought about that. And I think, wow, if God takes so much attention to this, how much more attention is He paying to all the details of your life? So you can have this confidence as you pray. Give us this day our daily bread. You are valuable to God. You are precious to Him and He cares about your needs. Have you noticed that the Lord's Prayer also uses a lot of us and ours. Give us this day our daily bread. I love that this is not just a prayer for ourselves. It's actually a community prayer. And we can use this as a trigger to remind us to pray for the needs of others. I use this as a trigger to think, oh, you know, God, I pray for our nation that we're living in. I pray, I pray for this nation. They're going through a terrible time. I'm praying for this person, this person in my church community. I'm praying for this family member. I'm praying for this friend. So this is a community prayer that we can pray for each other too. God is not just the provider for all of our physical needs, but He provides for our emotional and spiritual needs too. He provides bread for our bodies and bread for our souls. Jesus said that we can't live on bread alone, but that we should live and be sustained by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. It's using bread to describe the Word of God, God's Word, the Bible to us, Him speaking to us. And we can't just be sustained by having our physical needs met. We also need, more importantly, our spiritual needs met. So maybe you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, well, I don't need food and clothes. I, I, you know, I'm really good in that department. Well, actually, you know, that's not the most important thing in our life. I'm so glad you have those things. That's great. But you know, what's more important is our spiritual needs. And I think that um, this is a great trigger to pray for God to speak to us whenever I pray. I open up my Bible each morning. I want to hear the Word of God. I'm journaling. I use this as a prayer as well. Give us this day our daily bread. I'm asking God, God, I want your Word to speak to me. Come and give me that spiritual bread that's going to sustain me and give me life. So why don't you use this as a trigger as well to pray for God to speak to you. So if there's anything I want you to walk away with today, it's a confidence knowing that as you pray, give us this day our daily bread. You can have a confidence because God is your Father. He has unlimited resources and everything belongs to Him. You are valuable to Him and He will sustain you physically and spiritually all of your days. God is our incredible provider. I would like to take some time right now to pray for your needs. What are your needs? Let's pray to God for those needs right now. Thank you, God, that you are our provider, our Father in heaven. And we come to you as your children. You know every single need here, whether it's needs, uh, physical needs, Lord, people who need provision for, for work, people who need healing, people who are trusting you for just daily provision, daily food, people who are trusting you for their spiritual needs. They needing spiritual sustenance or emotional needs, Lord. Thank you that you care for all of our needs. We, we give them before you now. We think of them now and we, we place them at your feet. Thank you that you can displace worry and anxiousness in our lives and we can have a confidence and peace knowing you care for us in Jesus name. Amen. 
So there's a group of you who I, I don't want you to miss this opportunity as well. I want to take this time to pray for you too. Because God, not He provided for our greatest need and our greatest spiritual need was for forgiveness, healing and restoration. He did this by generously sending His Son, Jesus, to give His life for us so that we can have abundant life. And you are invited into this relationship with God. Just like I shared that those who receive and believe in Jesus, you can become children of God. Don't you want this relationship where you can just speak to Him like a child? Well, you are invited. You are able to. You can just pray this simple prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I believe in You. Thank you for forgiving me. Come into my life and I will follow you. Congratulations if you prayed this prayer. I'm so excited. If you made this decision, why don't you let somebody know? Maybe you want to chat, type in the chat online or let somebody know because we would love to connect with you and help you take your next steps as you follow Jesus. Have an amazing week and remember, God is our incredible provider.